Hello, everybody, and welcome in to episode 57 of the Dorton and Duckett Debate Podcast. I am Lucas Dorton. Nick Duckett is here. We have a new guest joining us today, folks. Brian Heinz, ladies and gentlemen. Brian, how are you doing today? Happy to be here, boys. Uh, great time tonight. Um, looking forward to it. Absolutely. And folks, as you can see by the topic, we are doing a WrestleMania prediction episode. Now, this is a little bit different from what Nick and I typically do on our podcast. Tippett, we, we, we haven't dove into any wrestling topics before. Uh, haven't done that. We both watch it. You know, Brian's probably definitely the biggest fan out of all three of us. So it'll be nice to have a expert's opinion here joining the show. Um, nonetheless, I'm excited for it. It's something a little different. And for the folks that like wrestling, we did this for you. So we're going to get into it. But first off, Brian, I have a couple of questions for you. A little, little rapid fire kind of thing. Um, as far as get to, know about, get to know a little bit more about you and your wrestling, uh, I guess, favoritisms and stuff as far as that goes. So, for the fans at home, who is your all-time favorite WWE wrestler? Um, just for longevity purposes, Randy Orton, just because he was my favorite when I first started. Uh, and just for the fact that he continues to wrestle all the time and he's won all the world titles, I would say all-time at him. Uh, it has changed. Like, I've, I've jumped on a couple of wrestlers and their gimmicks and – how good they are. And I really like Amos when he was first coming out. I thought he was great. Uh, Dean Ambrose, I would say, if he was still in WWE, my favorite. I used to love Dean Ambrose. Obviously, he's in uh, a different wrestling league now. But uh, I'd say, yeah, time has got to be ranked. Okay. I like it. I like it. And this one might be... And Brian, why do you hate John Cena? Why do I hate John Cena? Um, let's see. Because he's he a young talent once again. John Cena, um, this is a whole you could have a whole podcast on John Cena. He about how awesome of a wrestler he is, Brian. He is a fantastic wrestler. He's great with promos, but he just doesn't work very well with others. He buries talent. That's as simple as that. You knew if John Cena was fighting you back in his in, in the prime of his career, and that's being like about you know five ten years ago, he was either going to beat you straight up or lose with some interference. There was no in between. He just uh, you go up against Cena, you just know you're going to have to either screw him over or or win uh, dirty because you're not going to beat him straight up. That's how good he was. Well, that there's Nick's question for you. Okay, well answers that one. Um, now, this one, this one may be a little more difficult. You might have to think a little bit. It's okay. It's, uh, I'm putting you on the spot. I didn't prepare him for this. What is your favorite WrestleMania moment, if you have one? Dang. My favorite WrestleMania moment is pretty easy, actually. And that's just shock value and Undertaker losing his streak to Brock Lesnar. Yeah. You remember that meme with the guy that was just like, I mean, that was pretty much everybody. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I remember I was watching with a good friend, Andrew Dombowski. I was at his house, I believe, for that WrestleMania. And I just remember thinking, oh, yeah, he's going to kick out. And then when he didn't, it just couldn't even react. You know, I was cheering, you know, in hindsight, it's like, oh, am I really going to cheer against the Undertaker? But like, and, you know, I was kind of frustrated that he won every year. So every year I would cheer against him. He actually lost. I was like, hit me. Couldn't um, believe it. Now, let me get your opinion on that, because that's something that is, is a big debate question. People ask and are, are curious if Brock Lesnar was the right person to end the streak. I know Undertaker's come out and said stuff about it. Everyone kind of is like, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know if Brock Lesnar is the right one to do it. And, and what, do, what is your opinion on that? Because it's kind of one that's been tossed up with both sides. Honestly, 
I was very surprised that there was even a topic of him losing the streak. Period. Like, I if I were WWE, I would have just kept it. Like, it was way. Like, can you imagine seeing his career? What was it, twenty-seven and zero? Like, that'd be awesome. But um, I guess multiple discussions. I, I did. I read an article the other day. Like, multiple stars were um, talked about as ending the streak. Edge and Edge actually didn't want to end the streak. He said no. They had a WrestleMania match, and he said he did not want to do it. He lost it. So I, I always was um, of the mindset, like, they should have just kept it going. But it was a huge shock factor. I got to give him that. Lesnar was kind of OP, too. I mean, that dude would come in and just brutalize everybody. And to be honest, like, I mean, I know you pretty much said that about Cena. Well, to me, I always wanted to see Lesnar lose because he just went in there and dismantled everybody. And I'm like, what the heck's the point of this? Like, Kobe Kingston finally becomes champ, and he literally lost to Lesnar in, like, 10 seconds. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, that, that was kind of a disservice to, Co- to Kofi, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, now we get to we, we know more about you now, so let's get into the matches. Now it's a little different this year, folks. It is a two night event. Has this uh, ever happened before? Yeah, um, last year they they started the two night event, but it was because there was no fans. Um, they were actually very happy to do WrestleMania last year because of COVID and the fact that they couldn't even have a certain number of people in the same building. So that's why they had to do two nights, but ten. This year, I'm not sure why they continued it, but I'm fine with it, I guess. Um, but, yeah, so basically it's a two-night event, Saturday, April 10th, and then Sunday, April 11th. So more matches, two days of WrestleMania. You're not going to not gonna argue with that. So we will get right into it first here. Now, I don't know the order in which the matches are going. This is just what I'm reading off of uh, CBS, the WWE page, as far as how they list the matches um, and, and what days. So night one on Saturday, we have the WWE Championship, Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre. Now, uh, this one is interesting because of the background with it. Uh, If you remember Miz helping out Bobby Lashley um, to, or Bobby Lashley helping out Miz to get the WWE Championship, and then uh, Miz pretty much saying he was going to give Bobby Lashley a chance, essentially what that happened. Now, there's a lot of stuff that happened in between that. But at the end of the day, Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre. So, Brian, you are the guest. Who are you picking for this match and why? Well, you just got to start off with the hardest pick ever, right? I Honestly, this is a coin flip because um, I, unnecessarily long explanation here, but Bobby Lashley has been doing really good as the champion, in my opinion, and he's really over with the fans, but so was Drew McIntyre this last year or so. He's been really, really great. And so everybody wanted Drew McIntyre to have a moment with fans. So I am really torn on this one. I'm going to say Drew McIntyre, but it could easily go. It's literally a coin flip. The only reason I say Drew, because I saw that the, um, the uh, Hurt business actually kind of split a little bit. And I yeah. do think that's going to be Bobby Lashley. So I'm going to say Drew. Nick, what are your thoughts? By the way, folks, a group of us do like predictions every pay-per-view. And Brian's literally won or tied for first like three weeks, three times in a row. So what this guy predicts, I'd go with it. Just just saying. And, uh, you know, I haven't missed a SmackDown in months. But I don't watch Raw as much. So I'm not... Uh, nearly as informed on the Lashley and how he's, his title defense is gone, but I've seen you just, you know, brutalized the Miz. And there's obviously bad blood between him and McIntyre and him and his old gang. But uh, um, I'm leaning McIntyre. To me, they were pushing him really hard at the beginning of the year. And then I know he's kind of got that other storyline with Sheamus right now, which would kind of make me think, well, they don't need him back as the champ. But I just think Drew is too big right now, and it's a little hard to pick against Lashley considering he's been in the, in the WWE so long doing good for the company, and he finally now got the championship, and it's like, well, are they going to take it away from him right away? But I, with, regardless, I think I'm, I'm still leaning Drew on this one. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I'm, I'm definitely going with Drew McIntyre as well, too, Nick, kind of for the reason that you just brought up as far as that they were pushing him big, and then he... <clears throat> Obviously, ended up losing uh, not a few, few weeks ago in that whole 
stuff went on. Uh, McIntyre defeated Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin in a handicap match, which the stipulation that both would be banned from ringside at WrestleMania. Um, now, Brian, you did kind of mention with the Hurt business kind of not being a factor now. I don't know if that was going to be a factor anyways now, but definitely looks like it probably won't be with that and with with the with, – because you never know what can happen, you know, especially with Roman Reigns. You see how, how often Paul Heyman, Jey Uso, someone comes in and helps them. Uh, you, you never know. So For the life of me, I couldn't think of their name. Yeah, Hurt Business. They're going to – I honestly think if Drew wins, it's going to be because of them. And I would, I, I'd be willing to bet money on the fact that they intervene in some way, one or another. Yeah. And, and it's not like MVP is going to stop him with this broken leg or whatever he's got. Mm-hmm. <laughs> His crutches. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the next match that we have here, Nick, you're going to start with this one because I'm sure this is the one you are most looking forward to the entire <laughs> two days, folks. The SmackDown Women's Championship. We have Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair. Uh, now, if you guys remember in the Royal Rumble, Bianca Belair won the Royal Rumble Rumble for the women's side. So she had a chance to challenge uh, the champion, and that's obviously <laughs> Sasha Banks. So she is going up against that and against her in that match. So, Nick, Sasha, Bianca, who, who do you got winning and why? Oh, boy. Well, first off, hold on here. The boss, man. I mean, trust me, Lucas and Brian, you know, Sasha is my girl. I've literally, she's pretty much like, I mean, I started watching WWE not too long ago, but then I got big into it, and Sasha is pretty much what got me to stick. And I watch SmackDown every single week just to watch her. But honestly, and I might surprise you guys here, but uh, I've never picked against her before just because I can't do it, but I think I'm going to. My heart says Sasha, but I honestly think Bianca's going to win. I mean, I predicted she was going to be champ a long time ago. Brian and I both predicted her to win the Rumble. And she's just so dominant right now, and to be completely honest, she deserves it. So I think Bianca's going to win. But with that being said, I think Sasha's going to take it right back two or three weeks later. Sasha, for years, won titles, and she literally never once defended it. Not once. Well, and now she's defended it, you know, for, well, ever since like October. She's had it for like five, six months now. So there could be a reason that, you know, to assume it's going to go way longer. But I think Bianca's going to win. But Sasha's so big right now. And honestly, she, at least in my opinion, she's the best women, woman out there um, for the fans and everything. And I think they're going to give it right back to her. But I do think Bianca's going to win on Saturday. Brian, you agree with Nick? You have a different opinion. Uh, well, first of all, Nick, I'd like to say thanks for the uh, props on the predictions. And I was going to say the one thing holding you back on some of the, these last predictions was picking Sasha, going with your heart. Your and I truly head. thought, you know, yes, she'll probably lose, but I just could not do it. But, you know, I lost once and now I screw that. I got to go with my mind this time. Yep. So you're going you're going with your head. I think that'll put you over the top on the predictions for sure. Um I yeah, I think this one's a no brainer for me. Uh, Bianca Belair is um, doing great right now. She's shown to be a force. And, you know, Sasha is one of those where, you know, she's won so many titles, like you said, Nick, and, and show show up more opportunities in the future. And she's had it for a certain amount of time. That's a, yeah. that's a big factor. She's been telling us so. Yeah. yeah. And that's why, you know, the Drew and um and Bobby Lashley so hard is because Bobby just won it, you know. So yes. you have to take into account how long they've had it. So I don't think there'd be any reason you'd want, or if you're WWE, to have Bianca lose. So I think you got to have have them win this one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I agree with both. I also have Bianca Belair winning this one. I think it's just going to be kind of for the reasons that you guys mentioned before. You know, they're really pushing Bianca big time, and I don't think they would put her – all the way up to prop her up on this stage yeah. for her to lose yes. in the biggest match of her career. If this were a different pay per view, then maybe you could be like, "Oh, she'll lose yeah. this one when at WrestleMania." But right. this is WrestleMania. I don't think right. she's the, the biggest event in WWE. So yeah, I, I definitely think Bianca Belair is going to win this one. To be quite honest, she deserves it. As far as I'm concerned, as far as the women's side for SmackDown, I think Bianca is the most talented wrestler. I think Sasha is the best. Like. 
out of ring presence. She's very good in the ring too. She props up her opponents big time. Like especially yeah. her and Bailey. When her and Bailey go against each other, Lucas, I know you're not the biggest Bailey fan. I'm not yeah. necessarily either, but their fights are unbelievable. Like they are. But as far as pure in ring talent, I think Bianca's the best. I think Sasha all around right now I'd give it to her, but Bianca is so good in the ring. I thoroughly enjoy watching her, and I, I think she totally deserves it. I agree. I agree. Um, we have another match. Uh, this one, it, why it is a match, your guess is as good as mine. But it is anyway, so we're going to make a prediction for it. Big man. Bad Bunny and Damian oh, Priest versus The Miz and John Morrison. Brian, <laughs> what are you thinking? Uh, <laughs> well, this uh, angers me. Uh, you guys kind of know my thoughts about Bad Bunny. Um, <clears throat> how often he's been in WWE has been unbelievable. He's on there almost every week, and you know he has obviously a pretty good presence outside of WWE. So I'm just happy that he's uh, dedicating this much time to it. I think there's no way you look at WWE history. Um, some of the celebrities who have had matches. Uh, the one that comes to mind is Floyd Mayweather. I mean, he won against Big Show. It's going to be easy. Bad Bunny and Priest are going to win. This is going to be an opportunity for Damian Priest to really show up. That's yep. really what this is about. Uh, Agreed. Hopefully provide a few laughs. But yeah, The Miz and John Morrison, I don't see any way they're going to win this one. Nick? Yes. Um, I pretty much second everything. Brian said 100%. I mean, and it, it, I'm, I'm not necessarily a fan of Bad Bunny being in this, but um, like Brian said, at least he's like dedicated. You know, it's not like just a one or two time thing. At least he's been showing up every week. But personally, I'd rather have him out of it altogether, let the wrestlers wrestle. But I mean, being he's in it against The Miz, and The Miz just got humiliated, you know, against uh, Lashley, I see no chance that, uh, that The Miz and Morrison win. I don't see why they'd have Bad Bunny on WrestleMania just to lose. And uh, I don't necessarily want to see Bad Bunny win, but Damian Priest, I don't really watch NXT, but during the Rumble, Damian Priest impressed, man. I was very impressed by that guy, and I'd love to see him win. And I'm this is probably the most confident I am of any of the matches that Damian Priest and Bad Bunny will win. Yeah. Um, again, I agree with both of you guys. I, I don't <laughs> – I don't think they have, and I, it was funny because I was just talking to Nick about this earlier today. I, I pretty much said what you guys have both said, uh, that there, there's no way they're going to put Bad Bunny in this much part of the storyline, and then he just all of a sudden loses. Like, that, yeah. that's not going to happen. So no. I, I definitely think Bad Bunny and Damian Priest, and yeah, Brian, you definitely hit it out of the park, too. I think this is more for showcasing Damian Priest than it is having Bad Bunny win. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, they're. Yeah, I think they're definitely trying to push NXT. You know, they got Priest on the men's side, and they got Rhea Ripley on the other side. Which yeah. she's not NXT anymore, but she was up until you know three weeks ago. Right. Um, and then this is another match here: Cesaro versus Seth Rollins. Um, Rollins, who has newly just been back now for a few weeks uh, after the birth of his daughter, is going up against Cesaro. Uh, Nick, start with you on this one. What are your thoughts? By the way, off topic, but does any is there any word of when Becky Lynch is going to come back? I don't know. You know, because she's met, her and Seth Rollins have a kid together. I I would I want to see Becky wrestle. You know, ever since they pretty much got into it, she hasn't been there. But I uh, I'm going to predict, and I know this is a long way off, but I'm going to say next uh, next Royal Rumble. I think you got to give her a little bit of time. I know that's a long time, but that's my prediction for when she comes back. Just side note. I hope it's sooner, but we'll see. Yeah. I mean. Anyways, um, so I haven't seen much of Rollins, uh, but, I mean, the dude's box office, and I, I can't see him losing. I really hope Cesaro wins. I really like that guy. I'm sure... I was gonna say, I'm sure he's going to swing him, but actually, I think that's the question. Is he going to be able to swing Rollins or not? You know, Rollins counted the 22 times or whatever, and he just, for the life of him, does not want to get swung around again. You know Cesaro's going to try it. I have a feeling, uh, whether it happens or not, Rollins is going to find a way to win. But I'd, I'd love to see Cesaro pull it off. I just don't think he will. Brian? I was just going to say, this one, to me, is kind of like one of the harder predictions. I'm actually going to go with Cesaro just because 
Seth Rollins' track record and, and like he has been known to put people over sometimes, even though he's kind of on the younger end. And Cesaro never really has had a big moment. Like he's always just kind of been in the background, tag team titles, United States titles, stuff like that. So like Cesaro, uh, they've been pushing him hard and Rollins has really been selling this feud. And I think for the feud to really work out to have a good match, I think Cesaro will need to win. Otherwise, I just don't know what they what direction they go with Cesaro if he loses again. So I'm going to go with him, but it easily could be Seth because he's a bigger name. And Seth's going to make an impact here pretty soon, too. You know he's always kind of around the title. Here, so, But he's one of those superstars that can lose and still like bounce back real quick. So I, I'm going to go with Cesaro. Any chance Shinsuke gets involved? Uh, possibly. I doubt it, though. I bet it's straight up. Cause I hope it is, too. I mean, I don't think there should be any other altercations. But. Yeah. Well, it depends. Again, you know, Cesaro, isn't he? He's face, right? Yeah, he's face. So yeah. I don't think so. I, I think it'd be straight up. Yeah. Um, I, I think Cesaro's going to win. They, they've kind of been, it's been a very subtle kind of push for Cesaro. Like, the, there hasn't really been any, like, big thing like, oh, he has a, you know, huge match against you know, Roman Reigns or something. Like, it hasn't been as big as that. But he they, they've slowly been pushing him week by week. He's doing a little more. It's like, okay, well, maybe they're trying to, you know, maybe they're trying to prop him up for something. Um, yeah, and I think WrestleMania is where he kind of gets over the hump and is able to, you know, get a win in a, a extremely big match. So I think Cesaro is going to win. Um, so we go to another match, Nick. I bet this is probably Nick's second most anticipated match in the most t- in the two days. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. The Raw Tag Team Championship, the New Day versus AJ Styles and Omos. Um, so first, Nick, yeah, we'll start with you again here on this one. Uh, am I am I pretty correct in assuming that? I would say so. The only negative is I really don't know who I'm pulling for, which makes it you know. A little harder to watch, you know. I love the New Day. I always have. I mean, I love me some Kofi Kingston, man. I just love me some Kofi Kingston. Unfortunately, Big E's not with the New Day anymore, obviously. But I still love watching the New Day. And, you know, I'm not a huge AJ Styles guy. But, I mean, how can you not root for Omos? And I'm so excited to see this guy wrestle. He's just a tank, man. This dude's like eight foot twelve. And <laughs> 500 pounds. <laughs> He's so large. He just, like, pretty, ripped uh... that sell off at a... Uh, Elimination Chamber or whatever. And I'm, but yes, I'm looking forward to it. I, I want to see what Omos can do, and I want to see how the little guys, you know, in, in the New Day, what their strategy is against him, you know, and how him and how Omos and Styles work as a tag. You know, I think Styles is kind of going to want to run the show, but I think at the end of the day, if they win, I think it's going to be because of Omos. I'm, I was leaning Omos and AJ Styles. Um, I know we talked, Lucas. I think you're leaning New Day. I'm not sure. We'll find out. But and then you kind of made me change my mind. I'm really not sure. Who are New Day's the champs right now, right? Yep. Yeah. Is this for the title? Yeah. Yep. Gosh. This is the only one I'm not sure of, really. Um, I, I'm going. You know, I'll just go with my original. You know, I don't want to switch because I'm going to go with Omos and Styles. Okay. But it's hard to pick against the New Day. I mean, they're the best takes to ever do it, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. But this is the one I'm most unsure of, to be honest. Sure. Brian? Yeah, I was going to say, this is a tough one. I kind of like this WrestleMania for predictions because it's going to be all over the place. I, well, I'm my gonna... last pay-per-view is literally every favorite. It was kind of boring. Yeah, agreed. Like this, this one is like there's a lot of toss ups. This one's kind of a toss up. I would, um, I'm gonna say the new day, and the only reason I say that is because, um, I don't really know that WWE knows what they have with almost yet. Um, he's a beast, obviously, like you said, he's super strong. But if you notice, he hasn't really had a lot of actual wrestling experience. So it's kind of risky, in my opinion, to give them the title right now. Because if he's struggling, like, then all of a sudden he's your tag team champion. So I think he'll, like, this will be a kind of a big test for almost to see how good he is, how well he's been training. 
But I think it'll be impressive, but I think Styles will get pinned by one of the New Day tag team members. Uh, also, but th- but this one's so hard, too, because the New Day has won a lot of titles, and they lose a lot of titles, too. Yeah. So, like, they, they're kind of like... Styles. Yeah, win a bunch without losing a bunch, you know? Yeah, they'll, like, they'll like win... And then the next week they'll lose. So I, it's just tough, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say New Day just because I'm not quite sure about almost yet. Um, I'm also gonna go with the New Day. Um, I agree, Brian, with what you said about Omos as far as that goes. This is his debut. I mean, this is his wrestling debut. Now Nick mentioned he's had you know blips here and there of him doing stuff, but he hasn't like wrestled yet. Um, so I am gonna pick the New Day, but I will say. If this does go well, I could potentially maybe see AJ Styles and Omos maybe a few weeks down the road. Then, once Omos has got a little bit more experience under his belt and, and it has, you know, consistently been practicing and training and stuff, then maybe we get, you know, a potential that AJ Styles and Omos win. But for now, for tomorrow or for Saturday, excuse me, I'm going to be picking the new day uh, for that. Uh, now, this one, Brian, this one was newly added not too long ago, a couple days ago. Shane McMahon versus Braun Strowman for the Steel Cage match. Yes, uh, now, I'm looking friend, forward to this one, too. Now, our good friend Andrew Dombowski, we're in a group chat with him, and he was, um, I guess, let's just say not the biggest fan of this match at all. Uh, probably the nicest way to put it. But, Brian, we'll start with you on this one. Uh, what are your thoughts about this? Well, uh, yeah, Andrew, good friend. Uh, uh, he has a strong opinion on this one, but I actually am excited about this match. This is one of the ones I'm looking for. I, um, I anytime you see Shane fight, especially at WrestleMania, it's energy. I don't think I've seen him fight where it hasn't been. Now, is his record at WrestleMania good? Nah, he's not gonna win. Like Braun Strowman is gonna. It doesn't make sense to have Shane win this match, but it is going to be a great time. Shane's probably going to jump off the cage, do some crazy stunt, and um, I'm hoping it's a longer match, but this is a good thing for Braun 2 to get back on track, too. He's kind of just, like, in no man's land right now. He doesn't really have, like, a, his purpose. He's just kind of the Strowman Express on old people. So, like, maybe with this win over Shane, he can he can like get a little better direction, you know. Nick, uh, I'm looking forward to this match because as far as Raw is concerned, Strowman's probably my favorite on the male side for the for Raw. I like I like the Strowman Express. Um, I find it hard to believe he'll lose to Shane McMahon. Um, so I'm I'm going Strowman. I think it'll be you know a good match. There'll be some close calls probably to Braun, but it, I I think at the end of the day he wins. Um. I just I just can't possibly see him losing. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Braun Strowman wins. Brian, I you know, I definitely agree. Um now I have I just haven't been watching WWE as long as you have, but from clips and videos and stuff that I've watched, typically if Shane McMahon is part of a match, something exciting's gonna happen. He's doing some crazy stunt or whatever. Um so the steel cage match too. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. But I, I definitely do think Braun Strowman is going to win this. But I definitely think it'll be a long one. They ain't, ain't going to pull that cage down for a two minute match. So right, right. yeah, yeah. Um, Nick, we'll start with you on this next one. We have a tag team turmoil: uh, Naomi and Lana versus Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke versus the Riot Squad versus Natalia and Tamina. When did this um, now? The winner of this will earn the right to challenge the WWE Tag Team Champions Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, uh, which will happen then on Sunday night, um, which is the second the second night of WrestleMania. So the so qualifier is Saturday. Yep. So so the the winner on Saturday um, then will go up against Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler on Sunday. Okay, so um, who's the challengers again? This must have just got added. I didn't realize this. Yeah, it must have here. Um, so it's Naomi and Lana versus Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke versus the Riot Squad versus Natalia and Tamina. Oh, gosh. Well, I can tell you what. I sure as heck hope it's not Natalia and Tamina. Yeah. Man. Folks, for those of oh. you who don't know, Natalia is probably Nick's least favorite um, <laughs> women's star out of the ones there 
Yeah. Well, her, her and Charlotte. Her, um, and, her and Charlotte, yeah. Oh, gosh. I really... I think, unfortunately, I think Natalia and Tamina are going to win. Um, I just don't think the other ones are really... Like, the Riot Squad just keeps getting screwed over, mainly by uh, because Billy Kay keeps screwing them over in some sort of another. Yeah. I think they're really good. I really like the Riot Squad. I want them to win this. Or Mandy and Dana. You know, for other reasons. <laughs> I like Mandy. Um, I don't know, but I, I just I think Tamina and Natalia are going to get it done. Brian? Uh, so this one's really hard because it's um, <clears throat> you have to determine the other side of things. Do I think that Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler are going to lose later on in the night? Because if I think they're going to win, then it could be any of these teams. If I think they're going to lose, then I really think there's only two teams that Early can win it. Now I don't. I don't think Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler are going to win. So I'm Agreed. going to. Oh. Uh, um, it's a toss up for me between Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose and Lana and Naomi. The reason I'm going to probably go Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose because they have the firepower to do it. Lana's been kind of like on a roll right now, getting crazy wins, uh, just like roll up wins and stuff like that. But it's hard for me to picture that happening before a title match. Her like rolling up Nia Jax again. Actually, now that I now that I'm she did have that beef with Nia a while ago. That's what yeah the yeah tables and yeah. That's what I was just about to bring up too. Yeah. yeah. Now that I'm talking my way into this, that would make more sense. That that would be a little bit more fire to that match. So yeah, let's let's do Lana and Naomi. I'm changing it up. Yeah. Lana and Naomi, and then to follow that up, I think that somehow, some way, they'll beat. Nia Jackson, Shannon Bays. Yep. Um, Brian, I am also going with Naomi and Lana for the reason that I was literally seconds away from bringing up that, that Nick brought up was about the, the rivalry, the, the little beef that they had, um, you know, a few months ago. And that's kind of been leading up to this match almost. Um, so, yeah, I think for that one, I, I definitely think Naomi and Lana will, will win this. Um, I, I could see potentially Natalia and Tamina making it close, but I think Naomi and Lana are, are, are going to win this match. Um, for no, me. no, Brian, you said, considering you think Nia and Shane are going to lose, you think it's only a matter of two options. And I noticed both those options were the two raw teams. Is that for that reason or just? No, um, mainly because I don't trust Natalia and Tamina. Like, I just don't feel like Tamina, like, She's kind of like a bigger, like scarier wrestler, but she's not really like over by any means. And Natalia is just Natalia, so I didn't really think they would win. But Natalia's won a lot of unexpected matches too, so I don't know. In the Riot Squad, I just don't think that they're they're really doing anything right now. I think they're the least likely to win by far. Yeah, yeah, I agree. They just. I don't think them and uh, Anaya and Shayna have ever really even interacted on a show. Like I don't, I don't see that happening. Yeah, I I feel like this could be like that big night where Lana, you know, wins this match, and then her and Naomi are like super happy because they win the titles. I could see that because Lana hasn't really won anything like that. Right. She won that uh, Survivor Series by standing on the steps. Oh <laughs> <Girl>. yeah. <laughs> I personally hope whoever wins beats Nia and Shayna, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, so I will now we will go into the day two matches. So Sunday night matches here for this one. Um, so for this one, I will start from maybe the, I don't know, the lesser exciting ones leading up to the, to the biggest, the, the most exciting ones. Um, and this is kind of, that's kind of how they have it laid out on CBS as well, too. Um, so we'll start with the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. We have Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode versus the Street Profits. Brian, who do you have for this one and why? Um, I'm going to go with the Street Profits just because they've had a great year and a half or whatever since they've debuted. They're going to win multiple titles. They're going to be um, a dominant tag team for a while, and this is just another 
stepping stone for him, in my opinion. And it's WrestleMania. Why not give it to him? Robert Roode and, and Dolph Ziggler, they're they're placeholders, in my opinion. They're not gonna they're not gonna have it long anyway. So I'm gonna go with those uh, the Street Profits. I think it's um, I think they're just awesome to watch. Let's give it to them. Um, for just to backtrack real quick, who do we think ends the night on Saturday? On Saturday, um, oh, it's got to be because essentially there's two main events now. I mean, yeah, and I think it's got to be Bobby and Drew. Yeah, I would think so. I would think so. I mean, I and, would... and just and uh, looking at this too, I I do want to. I guess I didn't um, say this, um, but so CBS was making that prediction that they think that will happen. Of that that tag team match for SmackDown, I don't think it's actually an official match, but they just are predicting that that will happen on here. Um, they oh yeah, I seen that too. Yeah, which is um, I guess Sonya Deville told them that that they'll get a shot when the time is right. So they are predicting that WrestleMania being the biggest stage, that they will get that opportunity, and so they'll probably have something Saturday or Sunday where it'll say, oh. Well, now you're fighting, so good luck, is, is my guess. So, I don't think this is an official match, but this is a prediction. Of what there's potentially probably be. a decent shot that... So, on SmackDown, the last... There's been a lot of tag team on SmackDown lately. Yeah. Between the Mysterios, the Street Profits, Ziggler and Rude, and then Otis and Gable. Yeah. Um, so, there's a decent chance, I think, one of the, the pre-show fights is, you know, a tag team to determine who's going to fight. Uh, Ziggler and Rude, I think that could be a direction they go. I'm assuming they have pre-show fights for WrestleMania as well, right? I think so. Yeah, I would assume if they're going to have one, that's the direction they're going to go. Um, I personally, if there is a tag team fight, um, I, I hope it's Otis and Gable. Um, they've been doing really good lately. I love Otis. Um, and I personally think they deserve it. However, it's not to say Street Profits don't. They're very, very good. But yes, the likelihood is if there is one, it's probably going to be Street Profits. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm probably going to get this wrong, but I'm leaning Ziggler and Rude just because there's there's so many, as I mentioned, there's so many tag teams gunning for them. I just think, you know, maybe they'll have Ziggler and Rude win this one and then let the other three fight amongst themselves before they truly, you know, truly find who's the next real challenger and then they'll have them win. But I don't know. We'll see. But to talk about the street problems, Lucas and I kind of talked about it the other day. He's not huge on Dawkins. Dawkins is really good with the mic. I, yes. I would agree. He's maybe not the best, you know, in ring. That whole spin move thing he does is just pointless. I don't understand that move at all. It looks like he does nothing. But Montez Ford might be the most impressive wrestler I've ever watched. I mean, he, this dude's insane. Yeah. The flips out of the ring. By the way, him and... uh. Him and Bianca go out, I do believe. So possibly the most impressive one, in my opinion, on SmackDown for women's and men's go with each other. Um, I'm, I'm very impressed with Montez Ford. That dude deserves all the titles, but we'll see what happens. I'm leaning Ziggler and Rude. Uh, I'm going to go with the Street Profits. And to echo what Nick said, too, I am not the biggest Dawkins fan. DeMarcus I do Cousins think he's, fan. I, yeah, Boogie Cousins, as I like to call him. <laughs> he looks just like DeMarcus Cousins. Um but I, yeah, his mic skills I cannot deny are great. He's great, great on the mic. Street profits are great. They are, but the wrestling is. Uh, yeah. it's just show me a look. Maybe, maybe he'll do something great here at WrestleMania if he wrestles, and you know I'll change my mind. But this is the Montez Ford show for sure, in my, in my opinion, at least. He is pretty athletic for a bigger guy. But... He is. I'll give that to him. Um. So moving on now, we have the United States Championship. This is Matt Riddle versus Sheamus. Uh, Nick, I know you're a big Matt Riddle guy. Do you have him winning this match? I do. Um, as far as Raw is concerned, Braun Strowman and Riddle are my guys. Uh, by the way, Brian, did you know that Riddle is 35 years old? I did not, but that's not uncommon for some of these wrestlers. They, you know, he looks some like of them he's 25. He does look young, yeah. Yeah, I told Lucas that the other day, and we were both shocked. Um, but yeah, I love Riddle. I think he's. He's doing good uh, where he's at right now. Um, you know, he hasn't been the the United States champion for all that long. I think he's going to retain. Sheamus, you know, Sheamus just had the feud with uh, Drew. I think they're kind of just, you know, finding a spot for him to, to be in WrestleMania. I don't think he's going to win, but I could be proven wrong. 
Um, I hope Riddle wins, and I do think he will. Brian? Yeah, I agree 100%. I, I just uh, – I really like what Riddle is doing right now, like his gimmick and, like, the side promos he's doing and the scooter. I mean, everything he's doing is just fun. It's it's fun. I don't understand why so many people don't like that guy. I love I, Riddle. I like, I like him. Um, I, I just think that it'd be a mistake to have him lose to Sheamus. I mean, Sheamus is right now, like, like you said, he's just trying to find his place, and he's like – He's just kind of an Irish pub brawler type right now, and I just think this is just a a good win waiting to happen for Riddle. I think this will be the one that kind of like gives him more momentum, and then we kind of see where it goes. But the reason that this one isn't a for sure, like I'm going to go with Riddle, but I could see Sheamus winning, is I think Riddle's going to win a world title sometime. So I agree. Maybe- so, you know, you have to keep that in mind. When's he going to lose the United States title? Because it's very, very rare that you win both at the same time. So, but I'm going to go with Riddle at WrestleMania. Yeah, I'm also going to go with Riddle, too. Um, I, I, I just think that, you know, he's on a great run right now. And, you know, especially what he's been doing, you know, the, the last couple of months and so, and, and now fighting for the United States Championship again. I think this is going to be a great match. Um, Brian's cousin, Austin, um, is not a big fan of Matt Riddle. So I definitely would have liked to get his opinion on this match for sure. But, um, nonetheless, I think it'll be a fun one to see for sure. But I had Riddle winning. Yeah. See, Brian, that's that, that's that match that I predicted, right? That nobody did. I predicted Riddle and I was a little surprised that I got it right. And then, yeah, I picked Sasha, even though I figured she'd lose. And then it was a wash. It was a wash. Yeah. Anyway. And you know, you know, Nick, what was so uh, interesting about that match, obviously, um, kind of what I'm getting at is when Riddle won that, think about what happened. It was a triple threat, right? Wasn't it him, Bobby, and um, was it John Morrison? I think yeah. Yeah. Right. So, yes. and, John Morrison uh, won the pre-show, yeah. So, so if I'm not mistaken, Riddle pinned Morrison. So, so Bobby Lashley had the United States title. He lost it, freeing himself up for the world title while still not getting pinned. So technically, he's still over. So didn't see that one coming. But yeah, that's totally what they were thinking there. So I'm, I hope that Riddle wins. I actually want Riddle to win this match. But if he loses by some interference or dirty tactic move by Sheamus or something, maybe that frees him up too. So I will see. Um, we have another match here. This one, interesting, Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. <laughs> now, I just think b- before, Brian, I'll get your thoughts here, but I want to make one, one comment. Funny, Kevin Owens, how they were going up against Roman Reigns every single week in yeah, the that biggest dude, moments of wrestling, and now he has fallen down. They put him down to Sami Zayn's level here for that, this. Oh, that dude deserves the biggest raise of anybody in the company. He does. The yeah, dude puts his body on the line every week just to lose in the worst way possible to yeah. Roman, Jay Uso, and a pair of handcuffs that uh, Paul Heyman couldn't get unlocked. Yeah, that was embarrassing. <laughs> that was embarrassing. Uh, um, Brian, so what are your thoughts on this match? Well, uh, first of all, put some respect on Shane, uh, on Sammy Zayn, please. One of the best uh, microphone guys yes, out there in the WWE. Absolutely. And that's half the battle. Um, and this guy's pretty decent in the ring, too. He's got a bad, um, you know, everyone just thinks Sammy Zayn is terrible. Now, Sammy Looks like Zane a crocodile hunter out there. He does. He's not. He's not a, a like a winner. Like he's not billed to win a lot, even though he did just have the Intercontinental Championship. So there, this is more of a hey, Kevin, you worked hard this year. You get a match at WrestleMania, kind of thing. He'll win. Kevin Owens will, but I do think this match will be funny, and I do think it'll be um, entertaining from a wrestling standpoint. Uh, I love the the Sami Zayn gimmick with like the um, oh the conspiracy. Uh, they're like the cameras. I like that. So I hope that that has an impact on this match and Kevin does something fun with the cameraman or something. Um, but Kevin Owens, you talk about him and getting a raise. He's actually one of the higher paid, believe it or not, superstars. I was reading an article. So they, they understand what he means to the company. So it's good that he's getting his, his mania time. Last year, he got a match uh, with Seth Rollins and it was a pretty great match too. So I think this one's good. 
but I do have Kevin. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of that whole conspiracy thing, but I think it's funny that you know the two SmackDown announcers, one's kind of on Sami's side, one's not. It's kind of funny how they always go back and forth. But uh, I'm definitely not a Sami Zayn fan in the slightest. I'll give him this; he does a good job at what he does. You know, he's you know he's not even really meant to be liked by the fans. You know, he's just kind of supposed to be this arrogant annoyance that you know is good at what he does. You know, he's very good on the mic. I'll give him that. And honestly. For a dude who doesn't even look athletic, doesn't even look like a wrestler, he is pretty good in the ring. I'll give him that. Now, when he when he won, it was like count outs and stuff like that. It was pretty lame. But, you know, like I said, that that's what this guy does. And he does a good job at it. I'm, regardless, I'm still not really a fan. And I see absolutely zero chance that Kevin Owens loses this. There's not a chance. I'm, I'm that confident Kevin Owens wins this. There's not a doubt in my mind. At, they're not going to let him lose to Sami Zayn. After just repeatedly putting his body on the line and losing to Roman Reigns in the worst way possible. Yeah, um, I'm pretty much everything that Nick just said is the reason why I'm also picking Kevin Owens. There's no way they would have him go to war against Roman Reigns and then lose to Sami Zayn. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, but anyway, so we'll move on to the next match. The Intercontinental Championship, Big E versus Apollo Crews. I'm really intrigued. Like um, for this one, time. just because Apollo Crews for a while was not heel and in the last month or so has now turned heel Big and time, has been yeah. attacking Big E, has a big rivalry there with him. Um, so, Nick, start with you on this one. Uh, who do you have in this match? Um, so, first off, I really like Big E. He's, I really like Big E. He does a good job. and uh, But I don't think I'm going to pick him. I picked him. It's hard to imagine him losing because he's done a really good job, and I, I think they might want an extended uh, period with him as the Intercontinental Champion. But this is like the third or fourth time with Cruz, and Cruz is, you know, he's not only turned heel, he's gone like hardcore heel, man. And I just think the only reason would be to to put him to have him win and take it. Uh, I picked it last time though, last pay per view, and I was wrong. But I'm gonna double down on it. I don't want to turn against it now and then get it wrong again. So I'm going to double down and say Apollo wins this. I'm not very confident, but I say Apollo gets the job done this time. And then I'm willing to bet Big E would probably take it back soon if that does happen, but we'll see. I'm leaning Apollo, though. Brian? I like Big E, but I don't think he's thriving right now in a singles role. And I don't think he ever really did. You know, he just, like... He does better in cha- in the chaos of a tag team match, flying around, hitting people with like, you know, suplex or shoulder, whatever, whatever he wants to do. And I really do see a new day reunion happening shortly. I don't know when it's going to be, but I don't really think that he's done great. And I do think Apollo's knocked it out of the park with his new gimmick. That was kind of Apollo's yeah. thing that was holding back before, like. Ultra talented, terrible on the mic, boring, stale. Now he's got something. He's actually like showing. Speak- Give it to him. I'm gonna speaking go with that new, like that, you know, that accent and everything. Now you know, he's mm-hmm. really changed it up. Yeah, I, I, I think you got to give it, give it to him on this one. I think uh, just by strictly who's earned it. I would say Apollo has earned that more than Big E. Like, Big E got in a feud with Sammy, and Sammy had to carry that feud, in my opinion. Uh, so I think Big E needs, needs to go back to tag team. I think that's – some people are just tag team material. I think Big E. So uh, I'm going to go with Apollo. Um, I, I – th- this is kind of a tough one. I I definitely see your guys' reasonings for, for picking Apollo. He's kind of, I mean, he's obviously lost last few times and they have that, that beef and stuff going on. But I, I'm going to pick Big E for kind of the reason that Brian mentioned just now is that he has kind of, he has been struggling by himself. It, it hasn't been, you know, the, the typical Big E that we see that's part of the New Day. And I think maybe WWE is is realizing that, and they're like, 
okay, well, let's see what we can do here. Maybe we can try and give them one more push. And then if that, you know, doesn't really go well, then, you know, maybe he goes back to the new day or something happens there. But I think for that reason, I'm going, I think I'm going to pick Big E on this one. Um, I could see Apollo winning. I don't think it's a for sure Big E is going to win, but I, I definitely think if I'm making a prediction, it's Big E kind of for those reasons. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to go with him on this one. Uh, this one, my opinion, maybe outside of the, um, the championship matches, is probably my favorite match out of the two days. And that is the Fiend, uh, Bray Wyatt versus yeah. Randy Orton. I am really, really looking forward yeah, to this. This will be highly anticipated. Um, so we will, Brian, start with you on this one. Who do you have winning this match and why? Well, it's pretty easy that the Fiend is going to win to me. Like, the Fiend just got earned, literally, by Randy the last time they fought. And playing my he, I think the Fiend is, is due to win this one, but I'm actually really excited that the it's going to be in the live because that means more actual wrestling action, which, you know, the last, co- you know, year or so, it's been more cinematic stuff with the Fiend. Right. And, which is fine, and they did the, yeah. good, the COVID but I think it's really going to be cool to see him fight Randy Orton. I think they will do a little bit of cinematic, probably pre-recorded stuff, you know, backstage stuff. Um, something crazy is going to happen in this match. That Obviously, we all know that, but I'm just stating that. Something crazy is going to happen. The Fiend's going to win. I hope my, my, my only little hiccup is, is it going to be a clear winner? Or is it going to be some kind of like a no contest where some crazy... Well, Alexa Bliss interfered. Which it definitely could be because not like a title or anything's on the line here, you know? So you don't really need a, you know, sure-handed winner. Right. That's my only hiccup with the prediction. But I'm going to say... I'm going to say Fiend does actually win the match against Randy. Next. So, you know, Brian kind of mentioned all the cinematic stuff and whatnot that they've done, which honestly has been pretty clever for the most part. Like that that fire match, whatever that was called, that was pretty cool. And see, that's one of the benefits of actually the no fans. That, to believe it or not, there's been some benefits. You know, they can do some of that stuff. You know, when there's no fans there, you can, you know, uh, you know, have different camera angles and do stuff that, you know, obviously fans would notice, but they're not going to when they're not there, you know. And now with fans at WrestleMania, I'm sure, it, it, you know, it just makes sense they're going to go away from that a little bit, you know, back to more fighting. And uh, I do think it's going to be a good match. Uh, I can't, if there is a true decisive winner, I'm pretty confident it's going to be the Fiend. I can't imagine him coming, you know, back from being burned and then lose. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing him wrestle in that in that new burned mask or whatever that he looks. I mean, he literally looks like freaky. It's nice. They did really good with that. Uh, he looks like he looks awesome. Um, yeah, I think there's a good chance it could be some sort of no contest thing as well. But uh, I'm leaning the fiend. Yeah, I also am going to go with the fiend as well too. Um, as both you guys mentioned, this isn't you know a match for any big championship or belt or anything. This is just a, a, a normal match, but. Uh, definitely an anticipated one uh, with the Fiend kind of making his return uh, a couple weeks ago now. Um, but now he will be fighting in uh, WrestleMania against Randy Orton. So I'm going to be going with the Fiend on this one. Uh, now we have the Raw Women's Championship. This is Asuka versus Rhea Ripley. Um, so let's see. Who yes. is Nick? Nick, I guess I'll start with you on this one. Um, who do you have winning this one? This might be my most anticipated match from Sunday. I mean, the Reigns one's going to be good just because it's Roman. It's going to be really long, you know, whatever. He's the face of the company, probably. But I really, ever since, pretty much the first time I've seen Rhea Ripley, I don't really watch NXT, was Royal Rumble. And my goodness, was she impressive. I mean, she pretty much instantly became one of my favorite women to root for. Um, and I, I'm definitely going to be pulling for her. And I, I'm pretty confident she's going to win. Asuka's done a really good job. Asuka's a great fighter, hard to pick against. But, you know, immediately when Ripley came, they gave her a title match, you know, immediately. And I think they're going to go right ahead and just continue pushing her all the way to the to being the champ. Um, there'll probably be a rematch then after that. But uh, I, I think Ripley's going to win. 
Brian? Yeah, it really pains me to say that because I don't like Rhea Ripley. She's one of my least favorite um, female superstars. But I have to give her credit. She has a ton of talent. She's actually decent on the mic. And, um, you know, you got to look at time frame, too. Asuka's had the title plenty long, and she's won it before. So How long she had it for? Um, oh, so Becky Lynch... Becky Lynch. Oh, yeah, she um, took over for Becky Lynch. Yeah. She won the money in the bank, but she found out it was actually for the title. I don't believe she's lost it since then, if I'm not mistaken. So um, I'm going to go with Rhea Ripley. I also think that um, Rhea Ripley will uh, have another feud with Charlotte in the near future for the title. Because uh, remember, Rhea Ripley fought Charlotte. It was either last year. Yeah, I think it was last year just uh, for the NXT title, and Charlotte won that at WrestleMania. So, Yeah, I think, I think you're right on that. One. Yeah, I think Rhea will win this one. I think Asuka will go do something else for a little bit. If not, maybe fight one more time, and then I think it'll be Rhea and Charlotte battling. Yeah, um, I'm also going to go with Rhea Ripley, and I'm kind of the same boat as Brian. I don't know if... <laughs> I don't know if I want to pick her, but, I mean, she she is really solid at what she does, and definitely I'd have to give her props for that. Um, and I, I kind of, for that reason, I mean, Asuka's had it for, it seems like, ages now. Um, so it definitely kind of is a changing of the guard type thing. I think Rhea Ripley now dominating NXT, getting brought up now to the main roster. Um, I think she they're going to shoot her up right away. So I, I have Rhea Ripley winning this match. You guys are Ripley fans, eh? Mm-hmm. Not, not ginormous. Not ginormous. Um, oh, and then probably maybe the most anticipated match going on at WrestleMania, the Universal Championship. We have Roman Reigns versus Edge versus Daniel Bryan. Roman Reigns currently is the holder of the championship. Yes, Daniel Bryan. Yes. <laughs> movement. Um, let's see. Nick, start with you on this one. Roman Reigns versus Edge versus Daniel Bryan. Now, uh, initially, folks, I guess before that, um, want to give a little bit of a background to this. So Edge won the Royal Rumble for the men's. It was pretty much set in stone. He hadn't really said anything yet, but he was probably going to be wrestling Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. It's pretty um, odd. Dan, uh, Daniel Bryan kind of felt like he got screwed a little bit in the match that he had um, after winning the um, what was the match? Well, he won the uh, Elimination Chamber. The Elimination Chamber, yes. And then he w- that was to go up against Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns essentially I mean, challenged him seconds after the match ended and Daniel Bryan lost. Um, well, we so almost Daniel knew Bryan him. Felt um, that he kind of got screwed a little bit. So he essentially, with a lot of work and stuff and help with Adam Pierce and such, Sony Deville, he is going to, it's going to be a Roman Reigns versus Edge versus Daniel Bryan match. So now having said that, Nick, who do you have winning why? Well, first up, WWE has done a really good job with this. Like, not only, like, there's feud between pretty much all three of them. Like, Roman and Edge obviously aren't getting long, Roman and Daniel Bryan aren't getting long. Edge doesn't like either of them. You know, there's there's kind of all three amongst each other, just a mutual disrespect for one another right now, right? And, I mean, Edge is one of the, the biggest names that WWE's ever had. Roman's, in my opinion, probably the face of the company right now. And Daniel Bryan's been around a long time. I think he has, like, six, six world titles, maybe. And has just, I mean, the fans love... This might be the most beloved guy in WWE right now. Um, and it's just... It's going to be a good fight. I think it's obvious it's going to end end WrestleMania, at least I would assume. It's probably going to be a really long fight. And this, this whole year, there's no way I'm picking against Roman Reigns. Not a chance. The only way I think about it is at SmackDown I'm like, there's, or at WrestleMania. There's no. I knew Roman wasn't going to – I think everybody knew Roman wasn't going to lose until at least SmackDown. And, you know, with the – whether it was because of Uso interfering or Heyman, whatever, you knew he was going to make it to WrestleMania as the champ. This is the time I could see him losing, but I'm still not. I don't feel comfortable enough picking against him. Um, I could see, I could see either of the three winning. I really could, um, but I'm going to lean Roman. 
uh, whether it's whether it's straight up or whether Uso intervenes or what. But I'm going to, I'm going to lean Roman. Brian, this is the hardest pick of either night, easily. And the reason it's harder for me, especially, is it's a triple threat. It goes back to what I was talking about before with the whole Riddle, John Morrison, Lashley. You don't have to get pinned to lose. So anybody can win this match. I would say the least likely to win is Daniel, just because I know his contract is, I think he will restructure it, but his contract apparently is running lower with WWE. He said before he wants to have a little less, he wants to be more of a part-timer. Uh, I don't know when he's going to do that. So I don't think Daniel could win. He but again, he's, yeah. multiple. he's multiple time world title holder, as Nick said. So he could. I think it's really more of a who's going to win between Edge and Roman and who's going to be the one pinning Daniel because I don't think either of those guys are going to get pinned. Um, and it's really hard because Roman has knocked it out of the park. Like you said, Nick, he's the face of the company. Yeah, to interrupt real quick, <laughs> has anyone gone from face to heel better than Roman has? Like, this dude is just hate. He steps out and it's just immediate booze by everyone. And then he just goes about his business and wins, normally in a very cheap way. And people just hate him for it, but it's so good for the company. I agree. And, you know, it's this is what I really wanted people to do with John Cena, because the same thing happened with John Cena and Roman Reigns. John Cena back in the day used to win and just all the time, and then just shove it down your throat, John Cena winning, you know. And he had so many people who hated him for it, including me. And very tense. And I, everyone was always like, make him dirty, make him a heel, because then... You know, you're going to get all those people booing already, and you're going to have more people booing. And they did it with Roman. I never thought they would because, again, he, you know, he was a popular guy. But he is taking advantage of all the haters. And he's – I actually like watching this Roman Reigns. I didn't really like uh, face Roman that much, to be honest. So uh, he's knocked out Park Edge. I don't even need to say much about Edge. He just won the War Rumble. WWE has been rewarding people more often, I feel like, for winning the Rumble by giving them the title of Mania. And he had just, like, one of the greatest promos I've seen in a long time on SmackDown. I don't know if you guys watched that. Yeah. Um, that was great. He's just on fire right now. I'll be honest. I thought he looked a little old wrestling the other day. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I mean, he, he's, he's got a little bit to work on. He's not wrestling every week. And that's part of the reason I'm leaning Roman Reigns. I think Roman Reigns is the favorite just because uh, as the face of the company, he, he will have the title in his hands at WrestleMania more often than not. But Edge is just so on fire right now. So I'm going to say... I'm going to say Edge wins, but he picked Daniel, and shortly after, Roman beat Edge to get it back. Yeah, I think if Edge wins, Roman's going to take it back almost immediately. I mean, yeah. Edge isn't even a full timer, you know. So I'm, I mean, but we'll yeah. see. Do you think with Roman being the face of the company now? Obviously, he's a, like a face of the company. I do think you're. They're always looking for opportunities to like pad the stats and give him titles because Roman Reigns doesn't really have that many titles, all things considered. Uh. So he probably could be due to lose and then get one. So I'm going to go with Edge, but it's so close. Yeah, this one is uh, tough. Well, I'm your boy, Daniel Bryan. I am a, I am a ginormous Daniel Bryan guy. Um, he probably right now is my favorite wrestler in WWE. Now, there are people that I have been coming up a lot more and I really like. But I think Daniel Bryan is definitely my boy right now. Um, as much, as much as I don't want to agree with Brian, I think he's probably right. Um, I, I don't think Daniel Bryan wins. Um, I just think that with Edge coming back last year and making his return and then, um, now, obviously winning the Royal Rumble and having that shot at WrestleMania and the storyline that's been going on there, 
I I don't I don't know if he loses now. And and now my, me saying that, am I all going to be shocked if Roman Reigns wins? Yes. No, I'm not going to, because he's won multiple times in situations where he should not have won. And and you know mainly referring to Jey Uso, Paul Heyman, and a bunch of others. So pretty much every one of his matches for the last three months. Right. Pretty much uh, all the outliers uh, that have caused that reasoning. Um, but I do think that um, Edge wins this. He's on a roll. I think they give it to give it to him. What I could potentially see happening is maybe Edge wins, and then Daniel Bryan challenges him. And then Daniel Bryan wins, and then Roman Reigns gets it right back. Um, so I, I think it'll be a really quick changing of the guard. I think Edge will win, and then I could potentially see Daniel Bryan taking it from Edge, and then Roman Reigns then taking it from Daniel Bryan after that. I mean, bang, bang, bang right after that. But for the sake of WrestleMania, I think I'm also going to go with Edge as well for this. But, uh, we'll see. So your ball's on Edge, huh? It's, I, yeah. See, honestly, I'll be okay with it. Like, I'm rooting for Roman, to be honest. I root for the heel most of the time. It's just kind of fun. But uh, if it's not Roman, I want it to be Brian. I, I kind of agree it probably won't be. I don't want Edge to win. I really don't. Um, but, yeah, I can definitely see it. But regardless of who wins, I think a month from now, Roman's definitely going to be the champ. Whether he, win, whether he retains or he takes it back, Roman's definitely going to be the champ a month from now, I think. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I, I I would say, you know, I was kind of skeptical with Edge coming back because a lot of people that come back, it's 50-50 whether they're even anywhere near where they were. And Edge has been great both wrestling and, uh, oh, granted, he's part-time, but also on the mic. And that's like he's a very good on the mic. battle. Man, he's elite on the mic. So I could see him winning and then, like, for a couple straight weeks coming back, talking, getting a feud with Roman. And like you said, maybe losing it at the next um, at the next pay per view. I was really surprised this year just by the way that Randy and Edge, uh, you know, last year they had a great match, and I thought, oh, the way that Randy fought, that they would have a rematch those two. So I was a little surprised that Edge was not fighting Randy, but then Randy got in a great fe- uh, feud with the Fiend. So yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with all of that. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting. I'm really looking forward to see who wins this one for sure. I hope it's Daniel Bryan. I don't think it will be, unfortunately, but that's all right. Your favorites don't always win. Well, that's the end of episode 57. Brian, I have one more rapid fire question I forgot to ask you, so I will ask you now. What is your favorite finisher? Mm-hmm. I've always been a fan, and, and I know they've kind of taken it lately. But I've always been a fan of the double underhook DDT. Um, I thought it's a, a, a move you can really set easily. It's pretty impressive. RKO is just legendary. But I like the I like the finish. I like to have a little imagination and say, "Oh, that would hurt." The RKO is cool, but it always is one of those where it's like you're landing on. It. You know, it's gonna hurt Randy more, <laughs> more than it yeah. hurts the guy getting it. You know, uh, so I'd go with the uh, double underhook DT or uh, Jackhammer's pretty dang cool. Sure. What about you guys? I'm not sure I have one. Anything that involves, you know, putting a guy in the air and kind of spinning him with it, like uh, what King Corbin does, is pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, Honestly, the spear is as simple as it gets, but, you know, it looks cool. I like the spear. Um, mm. Or Roman Superman punch. Uh, I don't know what you really consider his finisher. But, I don't know. I don't necessarily have one. But, uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I've, I've yet to decide my, my favorite, to be honest. And some of them are so good that they get overused too much. Like the spear is a great finisher, but so many people in history have used it. Same with like I loved, and this is like a top five finisher of mine, Sweet Chin Music from Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. now everybody's doing what they call super kicks now. 
I mean, they're Uso not even... is no... exactly. Uh, Uso, uh, Dolph Ziggler does it. I think yeah. Kevin Owens does it. It's like, and then none of them are finishers. So I don't know. Yeah, Montez uh, Ford does it a little bit too. Mm-hmm. For me, it's either got to be the Yes Lock by Daniel Bryan. I, I really like that one. <laughs> Obviously, Daniel just, Bryan's my boy. I like it. And so, and Sasha pretty much stole his. It just calls it the bank statement. It's very, yeah. very similar. Either yep. that or the Jeff Hardy Swanton Bomb. I really <laughs> like that one as well, too. Uh, I'm a big fan of both of those ones, for sure. But, yeah. So that's that, Brian. Any, uh, for- well, any surprise uh, turnouts here? Like, obviously, yeah. it's very, very unlikely. He literally even said he wouldn't be here. But John Cena has been to how many WrestleManias in a row? You know, there's always him. There's I, I would highly doubt it. But is there any surprise appearances that you expect? Some returns? It's, a, it's tough because there's no, like matches where i'm like oh could they throw a surprise return in there the hardys a couple years ago they got thrown into the ladder match for the tag team um i could see like a legend coming out and talking at the beginning of wrestlemania i think hulk hogan's already going to be there i think uh titus o'neill or who else is hosting with with did anyone catch hogan and o'neill i think are hosting oh is it just those two okay so i could see like um one of the older legends coming out surprising people. We'll see. Uh, it'll be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. Um, but anyways, Brian, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. I hope you had a good time on here on the podcast. We loved having you. I, I did have a good time. Uh, great topic. I can... Uh, I was uh, looking forward to coming on, so you know, just uh, keep me posted for f- further uh, topics. I'd be happy to join anytime. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, if you'd like to follow us on social media, you can follow myself at Lucas underscore Dorton on Twitter. You can follow Nick on Twitter at Duckett. Um, if you would like to follow our official Twitter page, it's at DND underscore Podcast. Capital D is capital P for that. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, share this with all your friends, family. And just like Brian, if you would like to be on an episode, let any of us know. And we'd like to have you on for sure. It's always nice to have new faces on the podcast for sure. But anyways, that is all that we have. And as for Nick, Brian, and myself, Lucas Dorton, until next time, we are out. <laughs>